Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I appreciate being able to, uh, to speak on behalf of the constituents of Melville Salco tonight to provide my support to the motion brought forward by the member from Walsh Acres, seconded by the member from Athabasca. And I will not be supporting the amendment proposed by the member from Saskatoon Fairview. Mr. Deputy Speaker, this is the first opportunity that I've had to, uh, to thank some incredible young people that I had the opportunity to work with uh, in the last couple of years, and they were with the Ministry of Environment. And that's uh, Elias Nelson, who is now the Chief of Staff for Rural and Remote Health, uh, Cole Bladder, who is now the Executive Assistant to the Premier, Sam Sass, who is now uh, comms in TED, and the uh, infamous Emni Elassi, uh, El Tassi, who is probably the best senior admin assistant I believe that this building has right now. I also had the pleasure of working with Mark McLaughlin, uh, the DM, who has now moved to the private sector in, uh, in BC, and some incredible ADMs, uh, directors, and just some, some very fine employees that uh, are dedicated and really appreciated their, their youthful enthusiasm. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I'd also like uh, to add to the public condolences that have been made to the communities of James Smith, Cree Nation, and, and the community of Weldon. And I know I speak for my constituents who are mourning with you. As in such typical fashion, Mr. Deputy Speaker, the residents and the communities in this province have stepped up and found ways to support those communities in those difficult times, whether providing food, financial resources, or just simply prayers to help those communities overcome their tragedies. I'm also absolutely overwhelmed, Mr. Deputy Speaker, by the compassion and caring that has been one of the province's core tenets, I believe, that has been held by the many residents of this province. Mr. Deputy Speaker, last week I was invited by the member from Kenora Pelly to be at the Regina Airport to meet the two humanitarian flights of displaced Ukrainian citizens. And Mr. Deputy Speaker, I would really like to congratulate that member from Kenora Pelly for his, his incredible efforts in working with the large number of displaced Ukrainian citizens that we have welcomed to this province. He has put significant energy, really, into working with officials, volunteer organizations to help coordinate such a smooth process. And although the circumstances for the need for these flights is horrific, the response really is to be commended. The legislative members that joined us, the Minister of Trade and Export, as well as the Immigration and Career Training officials that guided the process, were genuinely proud of our province and its residents for the small part that uh, we do to provide comfort and a safe haven for those that came into our province that night. We saw families repatriated. We met Ukrainian residents who had backgrounds in health care, computer technology, website design, truck drivers, business people, and more. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we have communities all through the province providing homes, transportation, furnishings, food and jobs for our guests, and they want to do more. I am very proud of this province, Mr. Deputy Speaker. The member from Kenora Pelly and the member from Cypress Hills and I uh, went to the international place today to, uh, to go to the job fair. Do you know there are over 5,200 jobs listed? And that's not including jobs that are available in, in Regina and Saskatoon, but 5,200 jobs that are listed on the SAS Jobs website, jobs that are available throughout Saskatchewan. That's more than enough growth for everyone. You know, I have great hope for, uh, for the opportunities that my two young grandchildren, Bryn and Tessa, are going to have in the future, Mr. Deputy Speaker, when they are ready to look for a job in this province. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I'm also very proud of this speech from the throne. It both supports the growth opportunities and enthusiasm of this province, but it really also works on tackling some of the difficult issues that a growing economy faces as well. Mr. Deputy Speaker, although there is so much uncertainty in the world today, we do know one thing, and that is that we have what the world needs, and we have growth that works for everyone. There are 31 essential elements that the federal government has deemed to be, well, essential to the well-being of the world. And Saskatchewan has 23 of them. We have the traditional potash, uranium, helium, and now lithium, but we also have copper and rare earth elements like cerium, lanthanum, creosidium, and neodymium. I don't even think those were on the periodic table when I went to school. But we have so many exciting opportunities ahead for mineral exploration and development in this province, and the innovation that's being utilized and proposed is absolutely incredible. 
from the development of the world's first carbon neutral copper mine by Foran Mining in Creighton to the first of its kind in North America, vertically integrated rare earth processing facility developed by the SAS Research Council in conjunction with Vital Metals in Saskatoon. This facility is going to showcase Saskatchewan as a continental hub for value added rare earth products. And it also sends a clear message that Canada can provide global markets with the essential building blocks for a low carbon future. Mr. Deputy Speaker, Saskatchewan is going to continue to play a critical role in contributing to the world's value chain of clean energy and food security. These examples are in addition, really, to the huge potash investments that Nutrien and Mosaic have made in our constituency and what BHP is undertaking in the province. Supporting local Melville Salt Coats companies like SASPRO, QHIO Fabtech, Parkland Manufacturing, and Noble. The world's largest uranium producer, Cameco, is headquartered in Saskatoon, just announced a huge business expansion partnering with Brookfield Renewable Partners to purchase Westinghouse Electric Company. And this potentially becomes a very big deal for Saskatchewan, apart from Cameco being one of Canada's largest employer of an Indigenous workforce. The majority uh, located in northern Saskatchewan. Its corporate head office is located in Saskatoon. This new purchase has the potential to bring affordable energy to northern communities, mine sites, and so many undeveloped regions of the world. It's predicted that where Evinci micro reactors can replace diesel power at a mine site or a remote community, carbon emissions would be reduced by 90%. This further exemplifies the innovation and ingenuity that the private sector has implemented to support reducing emissions through their operations. Yeah, Mr. Deputy Speaker, our oil and gas sectors utilize that same innovation throughout their extraction and refining process. In 2021, greenhouse gas emissions from vented and flared gas at upstream oil facilities in Saskatchewan totaled 4.4 million tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent. This represents a 60% reduction from 2015 levels and a 15% reduction from 2020 levels. Our previous Energy and Resources Minister has said Saskatchewan's comprehensive regulations target both methane from venting and carbon dioxide from flaring. This is far more comprehensive than the federal approach, which targets only methane emissions. Mr. Deputy Speaker, it's processes and rationale such as that that has encouraged us to draw the line with the federal government and develop legislation that defends that line. We're poised for incredible economic growth in this province that will support everyone. But we have found that we need to defend Saskatchewan's economy, jobs and future from constitutional overreach by the federal government. And I think the member from Athabasca simply and eloquently stated in his reply on Thursday, and I quote, so when we talk about our industry, when we talk about our resources, isn't it right that we protect it for us? as we contribute to the world." End of quote. Mr. Speaker, Deputy Speaker, I'm continually bewildered by our lack of understanding by our federal government, or better yet, their disdain for our oil and gas sector. When a socialist-led government of Norway gets it, I do not know how that defines our current federal government. The country of Norway, who is in the world's top 15 for oil production, is the 10th largest exporter of oil in the world, is continuing to expand their oil and gas exploration and development. Their industry also benefits from a reputation for being one of the world's least carbon intensive producers of oil and gas, much like Saskatchewan and Alberta. Norway is seen as a testing ground for low carbon technologies, such as the Northern Lights Carbon Capture and Storage Project, in which Shell and France's Total Energy are partners. Saskatchewan oil producers and processors are also huge carbon capture and utilization specialists, especially using CO2 for enhanced oil recovery, such as that found at the Whitecap site at Weyburn, and the proposed carbon storage by FCL in Regina and Synovus in Lloydminster. It's interesting to note that the Norwegian government just recently stated that it planned to develop, not phase out, oil operations. The Norwegian Prime Minister Jonas Gar Stor stated last year, if we were to say from one day to the other that we close down production from the Norwegian shelf, I believe that would put a stop to an industrial transition that is needed to succeed in the momentum towards net zero. So we are about to transition, we are about to develop and transition, not close down. 
Mr. Deputy Speaker, that is a socialist government. They get it. The counter rationale espoused by our federal government has motivated our government to ensure that we are looking after Saskatchewan first. Sorry, that was quite a little uh, oil and gas rant. My member usually talks about egg and potash, but uh, it's important to this province. But we all benefit from a robust resource economy. If we have the revenue, we can pay for the services that we know that we need in our province, whether it's mental health and addictions, improved urban and rural health services, maybe improvements to affordability. They all come from a healthy economy. And I'm proud once again to support our finance minister as she announced an unscheduled $1 billion debt repayment and also laid out a plan to balance the budget four years earlier than anticipated. These announcements are going to support growth that works for everyone. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the Melville Salkos constituents for their support and encouragement as we were winding our way through, I think, some unprecedented times. I so encouraged a couple of weeks ago as I spoke to a young father in Melville whose infant had some serious health issues. He could not thank us enough for the incredible care and consultation that he had with all the professional health care employees that he is and his family met at the Jim Patterson Children's Hospital in Saskatoon. I was encouraged by a young lady who is currently going through uh, the U of S medicine program who wants to specialize in pediatric medicine and can't wait to practice in this province. Or the number of residents who have reached out, thankful that they have received their surgery dates or have had surgery even earlier than they expected. Or the hospital manager who was extremely thankful that she was able to fill some critical positions by being given the opportunity to offer a full-time position versus part-time, as had been traditionally offered. Mr. Deputy Speaker, health care in this province isn't fixed yet. The perfect system that the opposition is yet to define is likely unattainable, but we are on the right track. The four-point Health Human Resources Action Plan that was announced in September is already paying dividends in a constituency of Melville Salkots in that our two health care facilities are going to benefit from very soon, which I know our residents are going to be extremely relieved to hear. Mr. De Deputy Speaker, there are so many reasons to be optimistic about the blessings that God has given this great province, and I look forward to doing my small part to ensure that we will continue to support the growth that works for everyone. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker.